Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 21st day of February. It is day 52 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter, and I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the scriptures. And if you're new to this podcast, let me just welcome you, let you know we are so glad that you are here. And let me also tell you, we try and keep it simple here. We simply read through the Bible, and over the course of a year, we'll read through the entire Bible, the Old Testament once, the New Testament twice. We've been doing this now for going on 10 years. It has been a life-changing journey for Heather and myself. And Heather, you ask who's Heather? Heather is my co-host and the love of my life. She is my wife, and we are so glad to be doing this together. And as we go through these scriptures, perhaps this is the most important thing, we desire to read them with our eye on Jesus. There are ways to read the scriptures that do not lead to life, and there's a way that leads to him. And so we seek the best we can to read these scriptures through the lens of Jesus and allow the Spirit of God to point our hearts to him through these words. Today, the words are going to be in the book of Numbers, chapters 8 and 9, and then we'll finish our reading in Acts chapter 28. We're finishing that amazing book. Wonderful. Well, I'm so glad that we can do this now. Father, help us. Help us to see. Direct our hearts right to the heart of your Son. Numbers chapter 8. The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron the following instructions. When you set up the seven lamps in the lampstand, place them so their lights shine forward in front of the lampstand. So Aaron did this. He set up the seven lamps so they reflected their light forward just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The entire lampstand, from its base to its decorative blossoms, was made of beaten gold. It was built according to the exact design the Lord had shown Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and make them ceremonially clean. Do this by sprinkling them with the water of purification and have them shave their entire body and wash their clothing. Then they will be ceremonially clean. Have them bring a young bull and a grain offering of choice flour moistened with olive oil, along with a second young bull for a sin offering. Then assemble the whole community of Israel and present the Levites at the entrance of the tabernacle. When you present the Levites before the Lord, The people of Israel must lay their hands on them, raising his hands. Aaron must then present the Levites to the Lord as a special offering from the people of Israel, thus dedicating them to the Lord's service. Next, the Levites will lay their hands on the heads of the young bulls, present one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to the Lord, to purify the Levites and make them right with the Lord. Then have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and raise your hands and present them as a special offering to the Lord. In this way, you will set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel, and the Levites will belong to me. After this, they may go into the tabernacle to do their work, because you have purified them and presented them as a special offering. Of all the people of Israel, the Levites are reserved for me. I have claimed them for myself in place of all the firstborn sons of the Israelites. I have taken the Levites as their substitutes, for all the firstborn males among the people of Israel are mine. Both of people and of animals, I set them apart for myself on the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Yes, I have claimed the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons of Israel. And of all the Israelites, I have assigned the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They will serve in the tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and make sacrifices to purify the people so no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. So Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel dedicated the Levites, following carefully all the Lord's instructions to Moses. The Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron lifted them up and presented them to the Lord as a special offering. He then offered a sacrifice to purify them and make them right with the Lord. After that, the Levites went into the tabernacle to perform their duties, assisting Aaron and his sons. So they carried out all the commands that the Lord gave Moses concerning the Levites. The Lord also instructed Moses, This is the rule the Levites must follow. 
They must begin serving in the tabernacle at the age of 25, and they must retire at the age of 50. After retirement, they may assist their fellow Levites by serving as guards at the tabernacle, but they may not officiate in the service. This is how you must assign duties to the Levites. Numbers 9 A year after Israel's departure from Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. In the first month of that year, he said, Tell the Israelites to celebrate the Passover at the prescribed time, at twilight on the fourteenth day of the first month. Be sure to follow all my decrees and regulations concerning this celebration. So Moses told the people to celebrate the Passover in the wilderness of Sinai as twilight fell on the fourteenth day of the month. And they celebrated the festival there, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. But some of the men had been ceremonially defiled by touching a dead body, so they could not celebrate the Passover that day. They came to Moses and Aaron that day and said, We have become ceremonially unclean by touching a dead body, but why should we be prevented from presenting the Lord's offerings at the proper time with the rest of the Israelites? Moses answered, Wait here until I have received instructions for you from the Lord. This was the Lord's reply to Moses. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people now or in future generations are ceremonially unclean at Passover time because of touching a dead body, or if they are on a journey and cannot be present at the ceremony, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They must offer the Passover sacrifice one month later, at twilight on the fourteenth day of the second month. They must eat the Passover lamb at that time with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. They must not leave any of the lamb until the next morning and they must not break any of its bones. They must follow all the normal regulations concerning the Passover. But those who neglect to celebrate the Passover at the regular time, even though they are ceremonially clean and not away on a trip, will be cut off from the community of Israel. If they fail to present the Lord's offering at the proper time, they will suffer the consequences of their guilt. And if foreigners living among you want to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, they must follow these same decrees and regulations. The same laws apply both to native-born Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. On the day the tabernacle was set up, the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud over the tabernacle looked like a pillar of fire. This was the regular pattern. At night, the cloud that covered the tabernacle had the appearance of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from over the sacred tent, the people of Israel would break camp and follow it. And wherever the cloud settled, the people of Israel would set up camp. In this way they traveled and camped at the Lord's command, wherever he told them to go. Then they remained in the camp as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. If the cloud remained over the tabernacle for a long time, the Israelites stayed and performed their duties to the Lord. Sometimes the cloud would stay over the tabernacle for only a few days, so the people would stay for only a few days, as the Lord commanded. Then at the Lord's command, they would break camp and move on. Sometimes the cloud stayed only overnight and lifted the next morning. But day or night, when the cloud lifted, the people broke camp and moved on. Whether the cloud stayed above the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the people of Israel stayed in camp and did not move on. But as soon as it lifted, they broke camp and moved on. So they camped or traveled at the Lord's command and they did whatever the Lord told them through Moses. Acts 28 once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people on the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Near the shore, where we landed, was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief officer of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius's father was ill with a fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors, and when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. It was three months after the shipwreck that we set sail on another ship that had wintered at the island. 
an Alexandrian ship with the twin gods at its figurehead. Our first stop was Syracuse, where we stayed three days. From there, we sailed across to Regium. A day later, a south wind began blowing. So the following day, we sailed up the coast of Petoli. There we found some believers who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters in Rome had heard we were coming, and they came out to meet us at the Forum on the Appian Way. Others joined us at the three taverns. When Paul saw them, he was encouraged and thanked God. When we arrived in Rome, Paul was permitted to have his own private lodging, though he was still guarded by a soldier. Three days after Paul arrived, he called together the local Jewish leaders. He said to them, Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government, even though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors. The Romans tried me and wanted to release me, but they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. I ask you to come here today so we could get acquainted and I could explain to you that I am bound in this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come. They replied, We have had no letters from Judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here, but we want to hear what you believe, for the only thing we know about this movement is that it is denounced everywhere. So a time was set, and on that day a large number of people came to Paul's lodging, he explained and testified about the kingdom of God and tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures using the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. He spoke to them from morning until evening. Some were persuaded by the things he said, but others did not believe. And after they had argued back and forth among themselves, they left with this final word from Paul. The Holy Spirit was right when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet, Go and say to this people, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes. So their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand. And they cannot return to me, and let me heal them. So I want you to know that this salvation from God has also been offered to the Gentiles, and they will accept it. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense, he welcomed all who visited him, boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. And no one tried to stop him. And now, Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and the hearing of your word. Amen. Thy kingdom come. This is the last that we'll hear from Paul. He's finally arrived at Rome and he's under house arrest. But the message cannot be arrested. No, the message of the kingdom of God will never be arrested. It will arrive, in fact, in people's lives even this day. The Bible doesn't tell us how Paul died, but numerous historical evidences seem to indicate that Paul was beheaded in Rome by Nero. And even though he was killed in such a cruel and brutal fashion, his message lives on beyond Nero or any other tyrant. His message even reaches us today and today we hear from him now. The message he preached about was the kingdom of God. We're told about it twice in this chapter. The kingdom was evidenced and heralded by Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, as promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the scriptures. Jesus is the heir to David's throne, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and all the kingdoms of the world. Through him, all the nations of the world find salvation and hope. We end this book of Acts with Paul proclaiming this king and his kingdom. And he's doing it right in the heart of the most powerful kingdom the world had ever known. Luke wants us to see the rise of this one kingdom right smack dab in the middle of this powerful Roman Empire. The kingdoms of this world might look like they still have all the power, all the glory, all the majesty, but they are on the wane. God's kingdom is on the rise and it doesn't come the way other kingdoms come. Not by power or might, but by his spirit, says the Lord. By his defeat of sin, death, and the grave on the cross, he has won our freedom and our life. The book of Acts has ended, but the story remains. And the reality of Christ's victory over sin, death, and the grave goes forward into this world. 
liberating women and men, boys and girls, into the life that they were made for. And the prayer of my own heart today, even as we end the book of Acts, is that we will step into chapter 29, the new life that is ours in Christ, and that we will proclaim his message of victory and love, and that we will learn more and more how to live in the joy of his life. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. And that's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. DailyRadioBible.com is our home base out here in the interwebs. And that is where you will always find us. And we are always glad when you stop by and say hi. We love to hear from you. And of course, we have a nifty little device there on the webpage that lets you leave a voicemail and share your voice not only with Heather and myself, but with the DRB Nation. So when you get a moment, you take it and let your brother Hunter know and let the DRB family know that they are not alone. But hey, before I let you go, just want to see if you guys got your ebook written by Heather Barnes entitled Discovering Jesus. It reached a good number of you yesterday in your inboxes. And if you haven't received it and you were expecting it, make sure that you check your spam folder. We want to make sure you have it as we head into this next season of Lent. This book was written as a companion to the season of Lent, as the title suggests. Let me recommend one way of using this ebook during the Lenten season. Try listening to the DRB podcast. That's this one that you're listening to right now in the morning. And when you have a little more time in the day to reflect, let me encourage you to listen to the lectionary podcast. And with that, you'll have your ebook, Discovering Jesus. There is a devotional that corresponds with that day's reading. And there is a prayer that's offered for the day. There's lots of ways that you can enjoy this book. That's just one suggestion. And before I let you go, just want to remind you all that this podcast and all the ministries and resources that are provided through the DRB are all free of charge. And that is made possible because of listeners like you. We are entirely listener supported and the DRB is a 501c3 charitable organization. So your gifts are tax deductible. And if you'd like to partner with us, that is so needed and it is so appreciated. All you have to do is head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and click on the donate link, and you will be on your way. Well, hey, I'm going to be on my way now, but what do you say we all show up again here tomorrow, and we will do it again. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time, let's go forward. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.